Now that we know what a connection pool is, let's talk a little bit about how it's being utilized in conjunction with our Java applications. So inside the application server, of course, we have a web container. That web container contains a pool of pre-built instances, the instance pool. Inside of there is where all of our components would be run. In this particular case, we have a series of Java servlets. So every time a servlet request comes in, a thread gets initiated. That particular thread initiation will contain one of the executing th servlets that we're currently running. And if these particular servlets need to work with databases, of course, we're going to have to work with this concept of the connection pool once again. So we're going to be going through this set of J2E services. Now, from the application's perspective, when we're talking about the concept of a database, we're talking about the, the, the object type called a data source object. So inside the programs themselves, they're going to be going out and acquiring something called a data source object. Now, data source objects come to us from something called the Java Connectivity Architecture Connection Manager. So it's just a fancy name for saying this is how we communicate with the connection pools themselves. So when we're out there building connection pools and defining them and establishing their, their tie to a particular database inside the application server, this information gets communicated to the applications through this concept called a data source or a data source object. So the connection pool is going to be as all these series of pre-built thread connections to one specific database. That one specific database thereby will have all these different tables inside of it, but each connection pool will only allow connections to one specific database. Now with the application's perspective, we're going to be looking at data sources. Now data sources are stored someplace, someplace very specific called the JNDI namespace. So what we're actually doing here from the application's perspective is we're looking up a name in an area called the namespace. That namespace entry, that data source name that we're looking for is going to connect us to a particular connection pool. So one of the things that we're going to see when we build a connection pool is we're going to have to supply a JNDI name for it because that's the lookup name that the applications are going to use to gain access to the pool itself. And what they'll get back is something called a data source object. A data source object is the object representation of the connection pool itself. From that data source object, they'll be able to request a connection from the pool, and then they'll be on their way to actually accessing the relational database. So our job as the administrator is to create the pool and then to provide a name for it, a unique name for it, a connection factory name called a data source name, called a JNDI name. Once we have done that, then that'll, that'll complete the circle and give the applications a name that they can use to go look it up in the namespace which will then connect them directly with the connection pool object itself. 